so we got out of the basement for a minute and we're up here on the first level. This place has come along. It's just cool. I always love the transformation from like rough to finish. I just love the finish. And speaking of which, we gotta go down there and get finished on our basement mantle. And today we're gonna start getting some trim on this thing. This is gonna be pretty sweet. And when we're done, this is gonna look so good. So let's go check it out. Last video, I got it framed up and built out to the depth that I wanted. We talked about the stone surround and how we're not up to code on that. So if you're wondering about that, go back and watch the video before this one. So in this video, my plan is to get this thing laid out. And I've got this blank canvas in here, that plywood that I framed on. I'm gonna sketch and snap lines on this thing and really figure it out. Cause again, if you're following, I don't have any drawings with dimensions. I have some hand sketches and a couple of pictures, but I'm really just figuring this thing out. And this is gonna crack you up, but the way I determine this height, I'm being dead serious, is off a photo I have of a tour Brent took us on to the Kell house, where I'm literally, I, I posed in front of a mantle and I leaned against it. So I was like, okay, where's my arm in that picture? And I literally tried to like recreate that picture. I even like bent my leg, how it's bent in that picture. And it's about right here. I'm desperate, I'm trying to figure out, but I think this is a good height. So there's your shelf top right there. And this is gonna be hard to see until I get some boards on. So I should probably get some boards on. So the first thing I'm gonna to do to get started on this mantle is cut the top freeze board. And I'm actually starting at the top of the mantle and working my way down. And this is really just for the over mantle part because in these historical mantles, they would a lot of times have an over mantle and then the mantle itself would be applied on top of that whole surround. You'll see how this all works out. And if you've kind of studied historical mantles, you would have noticed this as well. So I'm gonna get this board in. And of course it wraps around my framing, turns into the wall for a clean look. And uh, that is technically a freeze board and this little piece I'm ripping here is just kind of a small um, molding, essentially. It's just a one by, but it's acting as a supporting molding for that freeze board that I just put in. And this is essentially the header that I'm creating here. So you'll see me here throughout this whole process, use those spring clamps on pretty much everything. And another thing that comes to mind while thinking this through is that this build isn't really hard in a sense of like a bunch of technical cuts. It's hard in a sense of trying to figure out the layout of it and the proportions and the build of the moldings on the mantle you'll see as we get into this. Um, it's, that was kind of the hardest part of this, but as far as a carpentry skill level, this really isn't hard. I'm just doing, as you can see here, more 45 cuts and that pecky cypress just looks rugged. But hey, that's what they were going for with this. And I think, I think it looks good. As other people said, it looks like driftwood in previous videos and I gotta agree, it looks pretty sweet. So I'm just getting this crown situated and right on my marks. So that's essentially the uh, top header done. So I'm gonna wrap these sides now and brought up the old TS-75 just complete festival fan now. Um, I've just gone to the dark side, or the green side, I guess I should say. But this track saw is so awesome. All my festival stuff that I'm collecting now is just unreal. It's just, I think they're the best. And you can see this uh, piece has a 45 for my miter and then a 15 degree back cut. That is for when I scribe against the wall. You'll see me scribing here. No walls are ever perfect. And then I'm just using a hand plane to get to my scribe mark and getting this piece fit tightly. So there's a couple ways you can do this. I just like doing that back 15 degree cut just because it's easier on the hand planer. You just The shavings you take off are uh, a lot smaller. You get to that scribe line a lot quicker, essentially. And all the other parts of it hug tight against the drywall, as you can see here. So I'm happy with this fit. 
and I'll kind of show you guys top to bottom here how this fits all the way down. And even on the other side where it's gonna wrap my framing, you can see the um, heel of my miter is right on the edge of my plywood framing, which is exactly what we want because we want our next board that we're gonna put on to be a perfect miter right on that, to be flush with our plywood. And that's what I'm ripping right here. And this board is gonna be uh, glued in and mitered, or mitered right there at the track saw and then glued in. And again, using those spring clamps to uh, compress and clamp it in place. And uh, that is what we're looking like for wrapping that outside corner. The glue squeeze out, I will clean that up. I will not leave that for the painters. And any discrepancy in my miter, I fill it with Pecky Cypress sawdust in a glue mix. But thankfully with that track saw, I mean, my miters have been coming out good. Uh, a lot cleaner versus the table saw because I'm just, you know, pushing it on that track and it's, it's just so much more control. With the table saw, when you're doing these long boards, you kinda gotta, you know, feed it consistently, not have any stopping and starting. And um, the track saw has just been good. So there's a design and you can see I've got those two outer boards wrapped and the header. And essentially here, I'm just filling in the, the middle section and laying out that pattern that this designer drew up. So I'm referencing my page, cutting my boards. I'm kind of doing these one at a time, just making them fit and just laying it out in that pattern that she drew up. So down to these last ones near the stone, uh, we're just gonna keep filling up until all of our plywood is covered. And a lot of these boards, well not a lot, but some of these boards won't be seen but um, of course they're gonna get covered with the mantle, but I just used Pecky Cypress because it's all the same dimension and I had enough of it. But that's essentially the over mantle right there. And now we will continue on with this build of wrapping around our stone. So it was real important to me that this transition be really good. And I wanted to have tight fitting Pecky Cypress up against my stone. So you can see here, I've got the boards loosely in place. It looks good. So I'm actually gonna pre-assemble this and um, just get it glued up and shot. And we'll get this thing popped in. I was just checking the fit of it while it was in there before. And then what I'm gonna do is when I slide this in, I'm gonna shim it tight against the stone so that when the pecky cypress and the stone meet, it's as tight as I can make it. And I'm not sure, I know they're gonna grout this, uh, this stone here, but I'm not sure if they're gonna grout up against my wood. So I'm just trying to just keep it as tight as can be. If they're gonna grout it, then of course they can, you know, have a tight grout line at that transition. But I'll show you guys this here. Um, you can see my shims there. And I mean, it's a natural edge stone. So there's gonna be those slight variants and gaps, but I'm super happy with this. And this is essentially now, you can think of this as a door jam. Um, this is gonna get trimmed out like a typical door casing. The only difference here is I'm not gonna do a quarter inch reveal, which you would typically have. I'm gonna do a half inch reveal because that's where I need to be in my proportion. So I'm making it bead right here and I'm kind of just making the casing to wrap around that. Just pushing it across my beading bit and getting this thing looking good. Uh, just the other moldings that we made on this job have been beads and coves and this kind of rustic pecky cypress look doesn't take a whole lot of ornate uh, moldings. Uh, it really wouldn't fit with it. So beads and coves are really um, what's gonna do it for me here. So I got that beaded casing made and now I'm, like I said, I'm trimming out a door essentially. A really wide, short door <laughs> is what you can think of the firebox as. So I'm just getting my miters cut here, creeping up to my line, getting those cut and we'll just get this thing uh, pocket screwed just to keep it flush. Make sure everything's on point because essentially for me building up this thing, I need to make sure it's dead level because the shelf top of my mantle is gonna be based really on this piece right here. So I took extra precaution to make sure that this thing was dead level um, because you don't want a mantle shelf that's not dead level. If someone sets a ball on it, I don't want that ball to roll. I want it to just stay right there. That's kind of how I think of it. So got that thing put in 
and I just love the transformation. You see the pecky against the stone. Now the bead is coming into place. And now these moldings here are gonna be added to my casing. You can see they're rounded over and uh, they're just gonna create a really nice shadow line and just a really classic timeless look. Um, I ordered these moldings from the mill. I just chose them out of a catalog and it's like, hey, this kind of looks like my design picture. So that's how I ended up with these. I'm ripping a quarter inch off this here. You can see it right there on the right hand side. And that's because I'm gonna use a back band here and the back band is gonna hug tighter against that side. So it's not so far of a cut. And this is kind of hard to see when I was cutting it due to the roundness of the molding. You see I missed my mark there. So I'm coming back to clean that up. And again, like I mentioned earlier, this isn't crazy technical, you know, molding and cutting and joinery and stuff, but it's the, um, the buildup and the proportion of moldings. It's really, is what makes something like this great. So again, just 45s, this whole job is <laughs> cutting 45s is pretty funny because what you end up with in the end is something pretty spectacular. So again, another 45 getting glued into place and I am using 15 gauge finish nails pretty much for this whole build for everything. Um, they're just solid nails. You can see I lock nailed that together or toe nail, whatever you want to call it. The nailed the toes of the miters together. And here's another look at that buildup. Um, pretty, pretty sweet. Now this is just, and as I was building this, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, this is just every piece that I added. I'm like, Wow, this is looking great. So we're adding another piece right here. This is a back band. I've shown this many times on the channel. Uh, we did back bands on my house. I've got a lot of work still to do on my house, so <laughs> there'll be more back band videos, but back band is essentially a one by two, generally. This one is actually a, a two inch one by two. So one by twos are inch and a half by three quarter. Usually this one is three quarter by a true two inch and uh, we just bumped up the proportion so when it wraps around that rounded molding that i just installed it creates another shadow line and really just beefs this thing up now this thing um, is also thicker so it can support my freeze board and that is really the next thing that we're going to get into is um, creating a freeze board and this is going to be two pieces of three quarter um, glued together uh, but i don't have a pecky enough a 10 inch piece here so I'm gonna have to pocket screw and glue two boards together to get me to 10 inches I'm gonna glue and screw this board together and this one has the characteristics that I want you can see that black paint that I sprayed there that was because one of the pecs in the wood was all the way through and I didn't want to see a um, just you know bright wood behind it I wanted to see black so it looks like a knot so we got that glued up and of course those th two three quarters make an inch and a half and that'll be more proportional when it's sitting up on top of the mantle. That'll also get a 7 16 uh, fret work added to it, which actually we will not get to in this video. That is gonna be probably the following video um, because there's just that and the scrolling volutes that um, are, I'm still kind of waiting for. So um, I'll get to those very soon but I'm really looking forward to seeing that whole um, build come together. It's gonna take the carving, if you saw the last video, um, which I can't do, so we're gonna consult Brent's expert carver from Ukraine, who's an absolute master. So this here is my template, and this is to create the, um, the shape into that freeze board. I'm spraying this with flat black paint. Would have done white if I had it on the truck, but only had this black. Um, this is so I can see my pencil lines. Uh, if you ever tried to draw on that tempered hardboard or masonite as people call it, um, it's, it's hard to see your pencil lines. So I just needed something to contrast um, and that black flat paint did it. So I'm cutting out the shape here just with the jigsaw. This stuff's so good for templates because you can make these sharp curves and cuts and really this just an amazing product for templates. We used to use this a lot in wainscot, but we've since gone to quarter inch plywood and I only use this stuff for templates now really. So I'll get my shape cut out of this and then get it sanded down and that is my template. And this template of course is reversible. So this is the right side you're seeing here, but of course if I flip it around, 
and we have the left side as well. So what we're going to do with this template is clamp it to that freeze board that we glued up and then I'm going to cut the majority of the excess out with the jigsaw just so the router doesn't have to do as much work and I'm just going to kind of generally follow that shape and then bring in the flush trim router and I've got my bearings set up right on that template edge of that tempered hardboard and uh, that's going to give me the shape that I want. I just had to make sure I got the right length on that freeze board so that when I put it on top of that casing that we just made around the firebox that it's right where I want it to be. So I determined that already and got it done on the other side as well. So this the shape here we're making will essentially house the volutes that Vasil will carve. It's really just amazing being able to collaborate with a master um, on this. And that guy, if you haven't seen him, go follow Brent's channel and check out his stuff. Absolute master in every sense of the word. So I'm getting that nailed on there. And then here's where we get to the fun part. I mean, it's all been fun, but the moldings. So this is crazy. I built this uh, kind of guide because this is a little tricky. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna make this little mock-up of the moldings that I'm gonna build here. So that way, as I stack piece upon piece, I can be like, okay, I like this. Let's go ahead and <laughs> go back to our sample. And what am I doing again? Because this is tricky. This is really tricky trying to figure out how these things stack up for the first time. So that board I just nailed in is essentially a nailer for this. And you see how that, that molding I added, that's called a bed molding. See how it hangs over the, uh, you know, the cutout shape that I just made on the sides of the freeze. Those are there to house the scrolling volute. You'll see this in that future video when we get those carvings done. So those blocks in my hand are just uh, exactly that. They're nailing blocks for when I add up my next piece. I can set it right on top of this molding and then I have those blocks that I can nail my piece into and just really make this thing strong and again, that's why I'm using those 15 gauges because they're the thickest finish nails that I know of, the thickest finish nails I have, and they really give you a good grab on um, this wood here. So I'm adding another board. This is essentially another nailer, and this one is gonna um, have my drip edge nailed to it. So if you know anything about molding buildups in architecture, there was a cove shape. Uh, we made uh, coves on our uh, router table here. This is our cove cutting bit and then of course, you know, we would push our pecky cypress across it and get this cove shape on exterior. Of course, a drip edge is real important, but architecture actually brings drip edges interior because that's just how it goes. That's the way they look and it's an added detail that um, really I think looks good. So that drip edge, this is essentially, if you think of this as exterior, which all architecture is based off like temples from the Greeks and Romans. Um, this is like a fascia board right here on an exterior. So I got Tom here helping me hold that up right where I want it. And then I'm putting the final molding on top of this thing. And um, that's the terminating molding. And um, you'll notice in these shapes, as I show some of this up close, this one has um, kind of a finishing edge and at the top of the profile, and the one that I installed underneath this one, the bed molding has that lifting edge. So um, if you know anything about moldings, you'll see that, but that's kind of the communication here. You can see the shadow from the drip edge. I mean, that, <laughs> that just looks so cool. That brings me so much joy to see this come together and I didn't, this was nothing crazy, just 45s and some basic moldings. Um, pretty wild how you can get that look. So I've got the shelf top here and I'm sanding this down um, with some 220. I glued this up and mitered it so I didn't have any end grain on the edges. And um, we're just gonna get that in its proper reveal. And that is essentially the build of this mantle. Like I said, pretty crazy how you can use basic moldings, kind of 
basic boards, one buys and stuff, and create something that is really extraordinary in my opinion. This thing looks really good. And that, my friends, brings us to where we are currently with this build. Now this is not 100% done yet. Of course we have our scrolling volutes that will go here and support this. And then we have our fret work, I think it's called, or strap work. And basically what that is, is I'm gonna take the same material, Pecky Cypress of course, and rip some uh, one buys down to 7 16 of an inch and basically create a panel, like panel work like you saw on the original design. So there's that and um, the volutes and that's it. As if you couldn't already tell, I'm extremely happy with the way this came out. Now we'll say this, this top right here does look a little heavy, like the freeze can't support it, but that will change because when I put that, um, those pieces I was just talking about, that fret work, and then when we get the volutes in, that's gonna just beef it up. And I think the volutes really are gonna be like the supports that kind of give it strength and to hold up this big top. So um, as I was putting this top on, I was kind of getting nervous, like, Ugh, is this, did I mess something up here? But no, it's good. Our shelf depth right here, six and an eighth. So plenty, plenty there. And it's not hanging over the firebox like crazy, which is what we talked about in that first video. So we're good. This, this was so fun to do. I hope you enjoyed the journey. I definitely did. Um, this definitely brought up my passion for craft because I mean, look at it, it was just, it's just a fun, fun project. So let me know what you guys think. I will definitely give you an update um, when I do the fretwork paneling. That'll be another video and we'll come, at, we'll come back and put that on. I'll probably make that at the shop. And then of course, if I'm here when, well, I'll probably be the one to do it. I'll get the volutes from Vasil. Maybe I can even record him carving some of it. I don't know what his schedule's like, but um, we'll come back and we'll revisit this when it is done. But. Man, this feels good. I'm definitely taking a picture of this one. Of course, all the videos um, to document it and just record it. This is a good one. Um, and, oh yeah, we got our Wayne Scott on. That just ties it all together. So there you have it, guys. Classical mantle. Um, just, this was awesome. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.